You might think $1,450 is a lot to pay for a leather briefcase, but in the years since I've been making content about leather goods and apparel that's made to last, whenever I ask what the best leather briefcase is, people pretty much always say the same thing. Frank Clegg. It's a very small, independent, family-owned business just outside of Boston, Massachusetts. And I decided to come up here and find out why it is indeed worth $1,450. And it's not just because President Obama had one. Tell me about the leather Frank Clegg uses. Leather bag company, everything comes down to the leather. Uh, obviously there's ways of making the bag that uh, make it uh, different to a lot of stuff that's on the market. But the leather itself, what's that, what's that selection process look like and what kind of leather do you look for? You know, we're looking for a leather that, that's got a roundness to it, okay? So it's got a little bit of bounce. This hide's pretty good. These are bellies and they're laid out really well. So normally on a tumbled hide, this will be all pipey. Yeah, in other words, uh, tum uh, wrinkly. Mm -hmm. The tannery does a good job doing this, and these are all French hides. The selections are generally better. And if, if you feel this, you can feel how there's, there's a uniformity to, to the way it feels. But when we cut, a, when we cut a, a, a bag, you know, right here is the butt area. This is the backbone over here. The parts that you see, like the outside pockets, the gussets, we'll try to get them all out of uh, uh, the best sections and then in sections where there's a variation in the feel of the leather you cut if you cut a briefcase you cut the part that's exposed here and then like I look at it as like a smile all that has to be nice and then you can hide some stuff down there that's not exactly like this because the whole hides not going to be like this we can make a really good bag using really good leathers and they're durable and that's, that's what I care about, you know. I like it when I, I meet somebody that says to me, I've had plenty of bags for 30 years, you know. It's the only bag I bought it when I got out of graduate school. I went to law school, I bought this bag, and I'm retiring now, and now I want to buy bags for my kids. Why do you uh, emphasize veg tan leather for your bags? These are more biodegradable than uh, the chrome tan leathers are. And so when you want strength, like in shoes, a chrome tan leather is generally a product that people who make shoes will gravitate to. You can make them out of veg tan leather, but they're different, more difficult. Yeah, and it's more yeah. comfortable to wear chrome tan shoes as well. The thing about the, the uh, veg tan is it burnishes a little differently. Chrome, you can get chrome tan leathers that burnish. A lot of chrome tan leathers have a veg retan. You know, it's like, it's like a, a piece of hand rub tape, a hand rub table, you know? get a cherry table and you put some wax on it, you buff it, that's the same idea you're gonna get with this. It allows him to put the patterns down like you would if you were hand cutting. Yeah. So you put all your, your templates down and you knew where you wanted everything and then you could cut around it. Yeah. Where if you're cutting with a clicker, you cut a piece, you know, you look for that piece and then you gotta to go to the next piece and, you, and it takes you, you, times you're longer. manipulating the hide and sometimes you get to the end and say, oh, if I had a quarter of an inch, I could, I could get another cut, and yeah. I can't. So this allows us to cut like we used to cut by hand. You get to use as much of the height as you can. Exactly. All right, so what's the next step? After the pieces are cut, we put them on trays of all, all the same pieces, mm -hmm. and then they go on the racks. Mm -hmm. And so each one of these is a separate item. So once the pieces are cut, they generally will come to this area. And this is the splitter. Can you split veg tan like this, like that for veg tan? The thing with veg tan is uh, the strength is in the top layers. Mm. Uh, with chrome leather, you've got a chrome in, in the center and it, that's stronger. So when they make shoes and they put it on a last, the veg is not as good because yes. you have to let it dry um, over a period of time. Mm -hmm. It's like green wood, if you use green wood, you, it's gotta dry naturally, it'll crack and do different things. So this machine allows us to take the, the hides you know, for whatever thickness that they are, and then if you're gonna make a shoulder strap, you're gonna, if you put the two pieces together like this, it's too thick. Mm -hmm. So we'll split each panel down like this here, that's the thickness that these pieces were. And then that gets sewn and goes inside the bottom of a briefcase. 
why is what we do to the edges important? Like with leather bags, the, like the type of leather that's used is important, but so is the way you finish the edges. Uh, why? Well, when you buy a car, why do they paint it? <laughs> <laughs> is it just aesthetic though, or is it, has it durability aspects to it? It bonds the edges quite a bit. Yeah. We have really good edges. I mean, I know that because everyone tells us that, you know? My competitors and everything. <laughs> but we spent a lot of time perfecting the edges. I, if when you pick up, if you were to pick up a product and the edges weren't finished off, it would feel different. Hold this and hold this. Yeah. And then if this were thicker and, sit and firm, it'd make even more of a difference. If you do a briefcase like this, if it were to really get messed up, we can refinish it. When you first start out, like, and you have a customer base that's young, they might like that. Unfinished edges? Yes. But as you get older, as your customer base gets older, they get more sophisticated. And they see, well, these luxury brands all have these edges that are beautiful. Every single edge is polished. Well, it, we could, that, that takes as long to do as it does to make the bag, huh? We could make two or three times the bags if we didn't do our edges. <laughs> and we could sell them for a lot cheaper. But people appreciate it. So this is sewn, okay? This is raw, a raw edge now. And I'll, I'll sand that little section, show you how we do it. This is what veg tan leather does, it burnishes. So if you feel this and then go to this. Yeah. Okay, so I'm seeing before me a million different types of rivets, and I imagine there are a million different ways of uh, getting the rivets into leather as well, right? So you've got a cap and you've got this, mm -hmm. okay? So when this goes in, it crimps right there and it becomes bigger than a hole and the cap holds it in there. So this is steel and this is brass. The reason why you make the two together with the steel, because the steel will hold on to the brass pad. Here's a piece from about 45 years ago. Oh really? It's a camera bag. Those other kind of rivets were not being made at the time. And then the bodies would be in here. Yeah, so you're like 20 years old, you start this bag company. How did you come up with your designs? Like how does a 20 year old guy know how to design a bag? We didn't have an internet, I didn't see anything. I'd have to go into Boston or something and look in the high end stores, you know. Um, I thought to myself, I like to make stuff that if I put it on the table, everyone could say, oh, that's nice. And they wouldn't have to have any hype or anything. Mm. And so I just try, my eye is good for coming up with shapes. You know, and that's, that's all I, I did. I made this because I had a backpack when I was in grammar school. And it was an army backpack. I never liked locks a lot, I never liked zippers. And I wanted it to be something that uh, is durable, you know? Why is Frank Clegg worth it? What's the answer? Give me, give, me the, give me the pitch, the sales pitch. I buy the best leathers. I have talented people working with me. We've never sourced anything, any products made by any other companies, any other uh, countries. Uh, we control everything, and that takes a lot of work. I always thought about like how I would want something made for me. I make, make everything here like I'd make it for myself. 